Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. In today's Crypto Corner, revisiting the largest ever deal in the crypto space, that would be Galaxy Digital paying more than $1 billion uh, to acquire in a cash and stock deal BitGo, uh, which originally started out as a digital assets custodian service before expanding into a slew of other areas, including prime lending, trading, and portfolio management as well. Uh, and for more on what the deal unlocks and uh, some other questions here on the state of crypto, as we're seeing institutional investors continue to move into the space, I want to bring on the CEO of BitGo, Mike Belshi, joins us here for more on all those things. And Mike, I, I suppose... You know, as we're waiting for this deal to close with Galaxy later on this year, uh, talk to me about what the combination unlocks and how this combination of Bitcoin and Galaxy uh, really helps both companies build on what they're trying to do. Sure. By the way, thank you for, for having me on the show here. Um, good to see you again. Uh, so, so Bitcoin and Galaxy, I think, together represent the single largest institutional player you know, in, in the space. We both have had a common mission you know, for, for quite some time around help, helping make the, the ecosystem grow by making sure that institutions can participate. Um, and just for, for those that may not think about this a lot, there's a big difference in how you participate if you have a fiduciary responsibility to your clients than if you're participating as an individual. So the digital asset markets have had uh, strength in, in the retail sector for quite some time. Obviously, Coinbase has done very well there. Um, but on the institutional side, the needs are very different. Everything from how you secure it, how you manage it, how you audit it, how you run it, how you put backups and insurance in place, uh, these are all different. So Galaxy and Bitco together create quite a formidable strength. Uh, Galaxy, obviously, tremendous background uh, from the financial markets, a lot of depth there. Institutional investors are looking for, sure, how do you participate in a long fashion, but how also do you, do you work uh, the risk of that? How do you participate with the derivatives markets in addition to your long positions? How do you trade in and out? in a, uh, a safe and clean way. How do you manage your taxes, your reporting, all that? Uh, yep. So with Galaxy and Bitco, we've got, we've got a tremendous amount of technology plus financial services strength. Well, we finally saw last year, I mean, institutional money surpassing that on the retail side. And obviously, uh, as Mike Novogratz, your, your uh, compadre there has kind of pointed out, institutional money coming back into the space is, is going to be what's needed uh, to get back to those all-time highs uh, when it comes to Bitcoin. So, I mean, what are you seeing right now in terms of institutional demand? Maybe some of those concerns, the security is always top of mind. I mean, uh, how do you guys at Bitco maybe address some of those and how they shifted as we've moved farther and farther along in this cycle? Well, first off, the institutional markets um, may be slowing a little bit as, as you know, some of the, the current macro environment changes are, 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 are being discussed. But the overall long-term interest, the value proposition of Bitcoin digital assets hasn't changed at all. Um, and so uh, the, the continued investment from institutions, we're expecting it to, to fully come. Um, on the security side, you know, we started working on this problem you know, way back in, in 2013, we pioneered multi-signature technology. We've, we've applied a tremendous amount of operational control uh, as well as technology um, to everything that we do. Uh, ultimately, it, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of security that, that, that does come to play. And so we've, we've more, 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 mostly solved that problem. Now, what we're working on is a little bit of, you know, how do you address kind of the market structure? You know, digital assets emerged early on as a, a relatively simple market structure with, with monolith exchanges taking on kind of all functions of the industry. Um, and Bitco has, has built a qualified custodian. We're chartered actually in two states, both South Dakota and New York, um, and, and, and growing that, that regulatory footprint. Um, but, but it's really starting to, to tease apart the storage and security of assets from trading in a very safe way, the institutional investors can have confidence that they won't have single party, single counterparty risk on any one entity. Mike, we've seen some big sell-offs in the crypto space recently on the back of those headlines coming out of China, uh, crackdown on mining, but also the PBOC stepping in to try and close some of the loopholes that are still, they see still existing in the market. Uh, how do you make sense of the volatility on the back of that? And ultimately, uh, do you think, it, do you see that as a healthy shakedown? Well, you know, it's kind of ironic. A, a few years ago, the complaints about Bitcoin is that, you know, too much of it is controlled by miners in China, then who nobody knows who they are. Uh, then the next complaint is that there's too much, you know, non-green energy coal consumption uh, supporting those miners also in China. Now, here we have actually some fantastic news, which is both of those problems are being uh, solved in, in one shot. Um, I actually, someone have some sympathy to the to the Chinese people who unfortunately are being at least temporarily, uh, somewhat locked out of, of, of uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I think that will change over time. Some of the other questions that, that China needs, I guess, in order to be comfortable with Bitcoin for their 
uh, citizens uh, have yet to be be answered. But for the rest of the world that that isn't operating under such uh, restrict restrictions on their investments, uh, this is actually great news. Uh, the energy side of, of Bitcoin mining just got a heck of a lot better. And on top of that, you no longer have the worries about what could a, um, a centralized government potentially do. So we're going to find out that Bitcoin is very decentralized, that it operates just fine, even if a single government decides that they want to try to ban it. Yeah, and Mike, lastly here, I mean, we talk so much, we, we flash that screen, uh, that chart of the growth of DeFi. It's been interesting to see kind of uh, some of these cross-chain uh, entities pop up, Uniswap, uh, and obviously kind of the way that you guys help out. Bitco serves as the sole custodian for Bitcoin uh, that people deposit uh, and then want to move it over to the Ethereum blockchain in a process called wrapping. Uh, but there are other institutions out there, uh, other projects kind of dedicated to the idea of cross-chain transactions. I mean, how do you see that space growing if, if there's maybe unique risks to DeFi you're seeing right now or what the future looks like there? Well, DeFi is a little bit more on the, the front cutting edge of uh, digital asset te technology. Obviously, it's, it's only a few years old relative to like Bitcoin that's been around for over a decade now. So some of the use cases you have with store value on, on Bitcoin, very safe, very well understood. DeFi is the fantastic emergence of innovation in financial services. So um, we are seeing uh, a change now where you, know, you can automate market makers. You can have you know, completely cryptographic trustless loans uh, done between between parties. Um, these are harder products to build, and and they are merging. In terms of what Bitco does with uh, with the Wrap Bitcoin product, um, it's about helping have large amounts of value participate in those mar in those uh, DeFi markets in, in a safe way. As we get uh, you know the ability to do this cross chain, the need for those wrappers may go away, um, and that's one of the great things about technology is it keeps getting better. So um, I wouldn't say that. Uh, you know, wrap Bitcoin, although that's the, the product that, that, that we put to market, and I think it's been tremendously helpful for having DeFi grow. It's not the be all and end all of the technology. We're going to continue to shift with that. We will be participating with, you know, on-chain uh, atomic swaps between different chains. Um, and that'll make these products even better, more decentralized and safer. Yeah, interesting to see how these solutions uh, in the short term have evolved to, to become longer term solutions. But uh, we'll be watching as the deal closes BitGo gets morphed into Galaxy Digital there. But Mike Belshi, the CEO of Bitco, appreciate you taking the time here to chat with us again. Be well.